This is important information that you should know about what is coming up soon by Satan and his followers the New World Order. You can fight them if you know what to look for. Stay tuned for more info at Strive Van International Video slash Radio Station that's GB100 that's WGLEN check it out. A radio station made for just us, anointed a knight in God's army. They are both striving to fight to the very end to prove their point about us as human beings. We can strive for Christ or strive with Satan you choose, free will them now and now. The first eight verses describe a beast that rises from the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, each horn crowned by a diadem, and each head showing blasphemous names. We are told that the dragon gave him his power, and great authority. Verse 3 is crucial, and many have stumbled on it. I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. This amazing beast clearly becomes very powerful, and so arrogant as to blaspheme God, and to persecute his people. Verses 11 to 18 then turn the spotlight on another beast, who comes out of the earth, and who looks like a lamb, but who speaks like a dragon. This beast seems to focus world attention on the first beast, and makes everyone worship it. He enforces the famous mark on the hand or forehand that must be received in order to buy or sell. Chapter 13 ends with the infamous number, 666, the number of the bee. He enforces the famous mark on the hand or forehand that must be received in order to buy or sell. Chapter 13 ends with the infamous number, 666, the number of the beast, that is said to somehow designate a man. The short chapter would be pretty difficult to unlock on its own. But it so happens that chapter 17 seems to rehearse the same scenario, but from quite a different perspective. By combining the clues from the two chapters, I believe a coherent pattern emerges. In chapter 17, John is shown a harlot sitting on a scarlet beast having seven heads and ten horns, clearly establishing a link with the earlier vision of CH. On her forehead is written the mysterious name Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. She is described as drunk with the blood of the saints. In verse 8 the beast is twice described as one that was, a phrase that is repeated again in verse 11. That verse goes on to state that H. In verse 8 the beast is twice described as one that was, a phrase that is repeated again in verse 11. That verse goes on to state that he is also an eighth and is one of the seven. The last verses of chapter 17 describe how ten kings will wage war against the Lamb, but will be defeated. They turn against the harlot, and the last verse defines her as the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth, and destroy her. Let's start putting the clues together, letting scripture define its own terms as much as possible, and always bearing in mind that Revelation is a symbolic book. Most of the symbols used by John echo similar ones used six centuries earlier in the book of Daniel, which were explained in the text, which were explained in the text. The angels slash guides in Revelation give John the general meanings of the symbols in the visions. Summarizing very briefly, Beast equals Kingdom, Empire Rev 1710. Dan 717, Dragon equals Satan, Dragon equals Satan, Rulers Dan 724, Heads equals Governments, Diadems equals Sign of Authority, Blasphemous indicates Ungodly, Tabernacle equals the Church, who are spiritually residents of Heaven, Harlot equals Apostate Community Isaac 23 4. We should know that numbers are used symbolically in the Bible, without much effort, Judgment equals Fate, Waters equals People, Populations Rev 1715, where 7 indicates perfection, and 10 indicates stands for a complete or inclusive set. Many commentators, ancient and modern, have become hopelessly sidetracked because they do not accept the Bible's own definitions, and try to impose their own. Many pundits have assumed that the beasts stand for people for example the Pope, but the scriptures don't say that. They tell us explicitly that they're kingdoms or nations, without much effort, a number of reasonable inferenc. Without much effort, a number of reasonable inferences readily emerge. The text refers to a kingdom nation that had disappeared was slain at the time of John's writing said it about 90 AD, yet would reappear later in history. When this nation reappears it will cause people to be amazed. This nation is associated with the name of a man, 
and perhaps aspires to attain godly heights their way. Ancient Israel was one of a group of seven prominent kingdoms in the Middle East th. This nation was among a group of seven that existed in a then populous region, that is the Middle East. Before it was extinguished, when it reappears, it will be in some new form different from the first appearance. This nation is associated with a false religion somehow. There is another nation that appears later after John's day that will be closely allied with the restored nation. It wasn't one of the original seven. But when it arises in an unpopulated area, it will enforce homage to the restored nation. The new nation will first appear benign lamb-like. The new nation will first appear benign lamb-like but will issue draconian edicts that will cause all other nations to fall into line with it. The new nation is being directed by a false, apostate religion. There seems to be a blurring between the woman as a church and as a city. But in any case, there is a highly urbanized nation that exercises hegemony over all other nations. A set of ten symbolic kingdoms arise in the end times and they give their power and authority to the restored kingdom for a brief time 17, 12 to 13, until Jesus defeats them. When you look at the fact laid out like this. While there may still be some fuzzy details, some conclusions jump out as inescapable. As soon as you mention restored nation the obvious candidate that leaps out is Israel. Its name comes directly from a man, their patriarch Jacob who was renamed Israel Gen 32 28. Ancient Israel was one of a group of seven prominent kingdoms in the Middle East th, but will issue draconian edicts that will cause all other nations to fall into line with it. The new nation is being directed by a false apostate religion. There seems to be a blurring between the woman as a church and as a city. But in any case, there is a highly urbanized nation that exercises hegemony over all other nations. A set of ten symbolic kingdoms arise in the end times and they give their power and authority to the restored kingdom for a brief time 17. 12 to 13. Until Jesus defeats them. When you look at the facts laid out like this, while there may still be some fuzzy details, some conclusions jump out as inescapable. As soon as you mention restored nation the obvious candidate that leaps out is Israel. Its name comes directly from a man, their patriarch Jacob who was renamed Israel Gen 32 28. Ancient Israel was one of a group of seven prominent kingdoms in the Middle East th. Ancient Israel was one of a group of seven prominent kingdoms in the Middle East that includes Egypt. With their rejection of the Messiah, Israel's treasured cultural religion, became an anti-Christian blasphemy. Israel has always aspired to help God do things their way, from the taking of the promised land, to the pharisaical plot to eliminate Jesus. The children of Israel preferred their deeds over God's providence. The dramatic restoration of the Jewish homeland in the land of Palestine in 1948 was indeed seen as amazing, even miraculous, by the onlooking world. While many assume that it must be due to God's intervention, others who have investigated the creation of modern Israel find that it was due to conniving plans dating back to the late 19th century of Zionism and renewed following the First World War. By the Balfour Declaration, it was not God's hand that was involved, it was not God's hand that was involved, but that of the dragon, motivating Zionist agents behind the scenes of diplomacy. The Bible had this insight long before any modern pundit could possibly discern the covert machinations that culminated in a restored Jewish state. This resuscitated nation is a pretender, although populated by Jews' progeny of Judah, one of Israel's twelve sons, they call themselves Israel in pretense of comprising the original, full twelve tribes of Jacob. Even if all twelve tribes should be represented in today's Israel, Jewish researchers have found that those known as Ashkenazi Jews who engineered the takeover of Palestine are actually descended from the Khazar people, who lived in the Caucasus region, and whose king made his whole nation convert to Judaism in the 8th century. And whereas ancient Israel occasionally worshipped the true God, the new nation follows a worldly, ultra-nationalist, anti-religion known as Zionism. Israel has re, Israel has reappeared, but in a new, ersatz format. Just as predicted. Rev 3 to 9 for another hint about Israel, the second prominent nation, the later one that originates in a less populous region, seems to reach its zenith near the culmination of apocalyptic events. On the evidence, there's one nation that immediately springs to mind, the USA. It didn't exist at the time of John, and when it did appear, it arose in the New World, far from the populations of the Old World, with its declaration of the rights and freedoms of individuals. Particularly in regard to religious worship, the USA indeed looked lamb-like, 
and the two horns could symbolize the separation of church and state. There is no doubt about the dragon-like voice with which the U.S. government has been throwing its weight around the world over the last 60 years or more. All nations of the world are compelled to heed the voice of the U.S. government, whether they like it or all nations of the world are compelled to heed the voice of the U.S. government, whether they like it or not. In the vivid imagery of Revelation, this beast calls down fire from heaven and deceives the earth with the signs he has the power to perform in front of the world. This made little sense until the dropping of atomic bombs on Japan in 1945 and recapitulated in the shock and awe invasion of Iraq. One could argue that the religious right is still and not really what the prophecy points to. There exists a more covert connection between an abominable religion and there exists a more covert connection between an abominable religion and the U.S. administration. Summarizing a vast amount of evidence, let me state simply that there is undeniable evidence that the individuals who populate the U.S. administration are linked to a panoply of occult practices and symbolism that can be traced back to ancient Babylon. These politicians congregate at the Bohemian Grove, California annually to indulge in bizarre, satanic rituals, that is their abominable, anti-Christian religion. It is well known that G.W. Bush, J.F. Carey, and many other political figures are members of the L.U. secret society called the Skull and Bones. Many high-placed officials in Washington are associated with various occult-slash-masonic societies. As a little internet research will attest, it could be sensibly argued that this mystery cult of the elite more accurately represents the prostitute of the prophecy. One can think of Zionism as a geopolitical conspiracy for the New World. Leveraging these inside assets, one can think of Zionism as a geopolitical conspiracy for the New World Order whose top names come largely from the ranks of Jews. It is indisputable that the cabinet in Washington is dominated by Zionist interests promoted by Israeli-American dual citizens. In any case, leveraging these inside assets, the Israeli government exerts influence over the USA, particularly to do its dirty work in the Middle East. For decades the U.S. delegation has used its veto in the Security Council of the United Nations to prevent censure of Israel. U.S. foreign policy seems to be dictated by Tel Aviv. The first and second Gulf Wars make little sense except when analyzed in the light of Israel using U.S. military power to subdue its enemies. When Israel invaded Lebanon in 2006, deliberately destroying civilian infrastructure and killing non-combatants, the U.S. waited until it was too late before expressing some measure of reservation over the Israeli depredations. While Israel and the USA make, while Israel and the USA make an uproar about supposed nuclear ambitions by Iran, they simply ignore the open secret that Israel already possesses nuclear weapons and has the means to deploy them. Any nation fingered by Washington must jump and salute. Israel gets a free pass. The second beast the USA causes the rest of the world to worship the first beast. The trend is so marked that we can see that it's a hallmark of the New World Order. As many commentators have speculated, the Ten Horns of 1712 probably refer to the countries of the European Union.
You're watching and listening to Striven International Radio slash Video System here at GB100. That's WGLEN. Check it out.